Before we reassemble everything, we're going to make sure to clean and inspect everything. Uh, just to make sure it's going to work when we put it back together. Uh, the first thing I like to do is take everything out of the plastic housing that you see here and uh, use some dish soap and water, warm water to uh, clean inside and out. Uh, the reason for this is that there's almost always armor all, some kind of silicon oil um, that, that seeps in from the outside and uh, we want to make sure that uh, none of that contacts the LCD panels. So we're going we're gonna to give it a good thorough cleaning. That's been done here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, all of the light bulbs. Make sure that uh, uh, there are no light bulbs burned out. There are seven light bulbs that you need to check uh, and you can do that either with a continuity meter or just visually. On the bottom board, this is the display driver board. Uh, we're going to make sure that uh, we've resoldered the, the board interconnect solder joints. We're also going to look at the electrolytic capacitors. Uh, those are the big uh, uh, aluminum cans that, uh, that have colored plastic shrink wrap on them. Here you see uh, a yellow electrolytic capacitor. What we're looking for is signs of bulging, signs that anything has leaked out on either end. Uh, this one looks fine. Okay, here we see the top board. Uh, this is the first board that you encounter when you're taking the cluster apart. Um, what we're looking at is, again, the electrolytic capacitors to make sure that there are none which are bulging or leaking. Uh, all of the electrolytic capacitors are on the, the uh, white power supply board that you see on the right side of the screen. With the exception of one silver capacitor at the top left. Everything here looks fine. The power supply has just been replaced, so there are no problems with it. So it's okay to go ahead and start reassembling the unit. Okay, before we reassemble everything, we're going to clean the LCD panels. We're going to inspect them for any signs of paint wear. And if, if there's any paint wear, that will let uh, light show through the gauge in places where it shouldn't. So we'll touch that up with a black paint marker. That's been done here. And we're also going to use some Windex and clean both sides of the LCDs. Um, we're just going to make sure to get rid of all oils, dust. We're also going to make sure to clean around the edges. There's a little lip where the pink rubber blocks contact the LCD panel. That needs to be clean. You need to be very careful with that, sir. Of paint. So just use uh, some soft paper towels, um, some Windex. Clean it once, it'll be fine. And we'll do that on each of the three panels. Next, we'll take the pink rubber blocks. These are also called elastomeric or zebra connectors. And we're going to use some uh, Windex and a, a soft paper towel. And we'll clean those up uh, just like we did with the LCD surfaces. We're trying to make sure that there is no oil contaminating those, those edges. And we're also trying to make sure that there are no uh, paint chips, bugs, anything that might have been inside the cluster uh, contaminating those surfaces. The first step in reassembling the cluster is to take the odometer assembly, place it face down. We want to make very sure not to turn the wheels. If we manually turn the wheels, that will uh, upset the telltale and it will appear that the odometer has been uh, tampered with, so we, we want to make very sure we don't touch the wheels on the odometer. We'll take three of the screws in our 732nd nut driver, and we'll attach the odometer.
that completes that step. Next we'll take each LCD panel and install it in the plastic housing. You want to push it up against the orange rubber blocks. Then make sure that it seats flush. If we look closely, there are some plastic tabs that we need to, to avoid when we're installing the glass panels. We'll repeat the same procedure with the tachometer panel on the left. And again, we'll make sure it's, it's seated flush against the plastic case. This is absolutely essential. If it's not seated flush, it will break when we reinstall the bottom board. Okay. okay. This cluster is missing a small metal clip that would have been right here to hold this LCD panel in place. Uh, we want to make sure that it is also uh, beside and not underneath this glass panel. And that completes installation of the LCD panels. We'll make sure that the text is correctly oriented. This should be the top of the cluster. So all of the text on all of the glasses points the same direction. Next, we'll install the colored diffuser panel. On some models, you'll find a clear acrylic sheet that goes between the glass panels and the colored filter. This model does not have one. We're just going to make sure that the indexing pins are all in place. Those pins are located here, here, and here. This is how the diffuser panels should look before you install them. Uh, there is a black piece of plastic, there's a translucent white sheet, then there's a thick clear piece of plastic. You want to make sure that the index pins are in place to make sure that the right piece of plastic is going to the right location. Next, we'll install the diffusing panels, one at a time. And as we go, we're making sure that all of the indexing pins are lined up with the indexing holes in this plastic that we're installing. That completes the diffuser installation. Next we'll install the elastomeric connectors. These are also called zebra connectors or pink rubber blocks. There are two lengths, a short length and a long length. The short lengths are all vertical in this video and the long lengths are horizontal. When these are properly in place, they should stick out about a sixteenth of an inch. And that completes installation of the elastomeric connectors. The next step is to install the bottom board. This is the display driver board. We want to make sure that we've done our inspection to make sure there are no bad bulbs or leaking capacitors uh, or bad solder joints. After we've done our inspection, the board goes in place like this. Try to line up 
the holes the best that we can. Then we'll use our nut driver to install the screws. We're going to leave everything loose until they're all in place. And that'll make sure that we can tighten these evenly. Tightening them evenly is important to make sure that uh, we don't end up with any missing segments when we're done. Okay, all of the screws are in place. Now we'll begin to tighten them. We're going to start with the center screws. And work outward. Okay, the bottom board is in place. The next step is to install the top board. And again, we're just looking for the indexing pins. And we're going to make sure that we get the pins on this connector in place. You take quite a bit of force to press that connector together. And it looks like we're good. Now we'll install the screws that hold this board in place. Five screws go to the board. And another two screws go through the board and the connector. And finally, we'll install the odometer motor connector. That completes installation of the top board. And finally, we'll install the back cover. That completes reassembly of the digital cluster. You can find a complete description of this process, complete with high-res photos, on my website, batty.com slash corvette. That's B-A-T-E-E dot -E com slash corvette. You'll find a link in the description. Hi, my name is Brian Thompson. Since 1999, I've been helping folks fix their Corvette instrument panels completely free of charge. Producing content like this is how I feed my family. Please check out the sponsors, and if you found this video helpful, consider making a donation. You'll find a link in the description.